Hey, yo, yo, yo. It is the Ant-Man channel, and you're welcome uh, to join me today as I read the news. It is Monday, the 10th of March, 2014, and this, <clears throat> this year is going by fast for me. I don't know about you, but to me, it is going by like nobody's business. But, any, but, but anyway, <clears throat> let me get into what I have in front of me here. It is from ClashDaily.com with Doug Giles, and I got it this morning. It's published today by Doug Giles, and it is called, According to the Left, Christianity Sucks and Islam is Awesome. Sounds like more opportunism from the left. Man, don't you love how mainstream media and their soft brain disciples make Christians out to be fish stickered? Bug-eyed equals to incensed Islam? If you were to accept as true what some atheist secularists and prattling gay activists say about Christians, you'd think the church is chomping at the bit to chop off some heads of unbelievers. Glory to God, G-A-W-D. Um, well, yeah, you know, most of the misconceptions that people have about Christians, they were because... They come from people misinforming people, deceiving people. Some of the stuff that I see from people that are really hostile and desecrate the things of God, which is not good for them. Trust me, dude, God doesn't need me to defend Him. He doesn't need Christians to defend Him. He is the Lord. He sustains everything. The reason why the universe is, the universe is in perfect balance is because it is sustained by the Lord. He is the King. His decrees... His statutes, laws, commands, precepts must be obeyed. He doesn't care if you don't believe in him. He, he's just going to be like, well, you know, I gave you this book, this Bible, and you were supposed to follow it, and you were supposed to make it a, a, a discipline to, to, to live a principled, consensuous life to me. And you know what I mean? It doesn't matter to God. He's not a respecter of persons, you guys. He's, uh, he's God. And he doesn't, you know, you're, you're small... Your, your thinking is, is futile to him because if you look to the Lord and you ask him for things, he will teach you things that you did not know. He will teach you things you never that never occurred to you. God is so gigantic; his ways are unsearchable, man. His, he's just the atheist has such a small God. When they think of God, it's like a bald-headed old man that's like slouched over that just sits on the cloud all day and doesn't do anything. He's kind of arbitrary arbitrarily looking at us and he's kind of like I forgot the other word for it that he isn't really concerned about you he's not really cares about you the God that I know the God of the Bible he doesn't care how minute or whatever your your problems are whatever your problems are he wants to know about them even if they seem to be small to other people they're not small to him the uh, the those type of like private schools that bring you up in in the Word of God Usually people become, those are like atheist training camps because those people are not really showing you the proper way to worship God. It is out of love and not out of fear. The thing that religious hierarchies, if you will, have a problem with is that they try to control and manipulate people with the word of God through fear. And that's not right because that's what turns people away. You got to show people that, look, dude, this is, you can't share the gospel without sharing the state of nature that we're in first the bad news if you will it won't be good news to you unless you know that there is bad news that we're not inherently good people even me i love i, I most of my life i loved god i believed in him I, I searched for him i didn't really know him and i really wasn't saved because i didn't really accept his laws in my heart and sometimes you don't even know that that's going on with you but i you know was living in sin I didn't know that I was inherently bad, even, and I had one of the worst things you can ever have, is, which is self-righteousness. Sometimes you could think that you don't deserve anything bad. You were born into a situation that you did not deserve to be born in, that you are being treated wrongfully without having done anything to deserve it. All these things are irrelevant. Life's not fair. This is what the atheist cries about all day, and that there's no God, because I don't like bad things, and bad things happen in life, therefore there's no God. It's a, it's a weak argument to, to just dismiss the the creator of everything. It's like your father. If you were if you didn't if you were born and you didn't like your father, you're gonna hate him 
and you're gonna and I know what real hate is real hatred and you might not know you actually hate something until you really examine what hate really is when you ignore when you ignore completely the existence of somebody people do this to other people and people don't even realize that they do this with God but that's true hatred when you ignore the existence of somebody just because you absolutely hate them you want to ignore the fact that they're alive and that they exist Jesus Christ is like the the guy that I'm, I get along with and that my father gets along with and he comes and he reconciles us and that's the that's the beautiful thing is that he not only satisfies the wrath of God and his anger but he also he satisfies you by his words the work that he did the perfect sacrifice the perfect ex expression of love that he showed but Hollywood with the movie Noah all of the schools that teach pseudoscience and evolution are all trying to gear you toward hating God and hating Christians especially yep if you're if you were to believe the barf belched uh, if you were to believe the barf belched out by the BS brokers on the left, you'd stagger away Kool-Aid drunk with the belief that there is little or disparity between conservative Christians and militant Muslims. As a matter of fact, you probably would be bamboozled into believing that Islam is a peaceful little house on the prairie religion being temporarily hijacked by jihadist renegades. And Christianity... Christianity is the real charity vacant vicious cult that vying for the opportunity to seize the whip and whip us good. It's funny when secularist humanists always try to sound philosophical, it's weak. You guys' convictions are weak. You guys don't really believe what you guys try to spew out of your mouth. Because if you did, there, I mean, when you guys talk about millions and millions of years, there's this sanctimonious like tone that comes over your voice. As if there is this knowledge that only you can comprehend. And it's stupid, because... The Protestant reformers of the 16th century wanted to make the Bible so easily interpreted. That was the main point of the Reformation was that they wanted you to understand it. No matter what education level you were at. Whether you were a peasant or whether you were an aristocrat or whatever, dude. It didn't matter. Their, their whole goal was to make it for the common man to understand the Word of God. When you pick up a King James Version, it's very archetype. Thou. Thus, lovest, you hear this language that you've never heard in your life. When people dismiss the King James Bible just because of the archetype language, it makes me sick. It makes me say, what do you think? You're stupid? You're too stupid to understand this? But, that's okay. You could read whatever, whatever you want, okay? You could read the Old Testament in Greek, the Septuagint, if you want. I don't care what you read. As long as you guys are seeking it out. That's all that matters. And I like to read every single version I can get my hands on. Believe me. But, anyways, let me just get out because I could go on. Yes, the postmodern reality stylists are working their butts off trying to convince us TV-addled cattle of two primary things. One, violent jihadist is not based on the Quran. And two, all conservative Christians are theocrats. Ready to burn Katy Perry at the stake, stone Lindsay Lohan in a nearby gravel pit, and governmentally ramrod Christianity down everyone's pie hole. I haven't seen this kind of ham-fisted, forced PR, uh, farcical facade being parlayed, uh, or parlayed upon the public since Michael Jackson tried to make out with Lisa Marie in an attempt to convince us all he'd f found true love in an adult of the opposite sex. Look, there's no denying violent things have been done by the church and in the name of God, the Catholic Church, using the Bible to try to oppress people, not Christians. By the way, those were the guys being killed. But no, when you want to be willingly ignorant and convince your conscience to believe in lies, you are going to want to believe whatever your stupid mind wants, or your heart, because your it's usually your heart, because your heart is the deceitful dark thing in your body that tries to... And by the way, idiots... Because I know that you atheists don't believe in science, but the heart, this is a new, this is a new discovery by the way, the heart has a 50,000 times more stronger magnetic field than your brain, supposedly now. So your heart has a mind of its own now, we are starting to realize. And the Bible has always been right, so ha ha ha. Now that we have science on our side, you guys, and now everyone's opening their eyes, we can see that the things that are practically said in the Bible are practically true in real life. Like the heart in your mind. Your heart is usually, when it comes to the emotionally governed, the atheists, the secularists, 
Their heart is in control of their entire body because their mind is not disciplined, because their mind does not know how to put their heart in check. And this is what we see here. Um, you know, it's exactly that that we see. It's like we, we want to believe whatever we want. We're living in the age of relativism where we think that ethics somehow is applied to that when it's not. True, there are absolute truths. When somebody tells you there's no absolute truth, you should tell them, are you absolutely sure? Because that's just throwing, a, that's just throwing it right back in their face. They have no arguments, you guys. All their arguments are weak and straw man arguments. You could, they, they, set up, they set up straw man they knock them down because most Christians don't know how to defend their faith. Because they're living in this, relative, this age of relativity where everything is, oh, well, we've got to respect everyone even if they're stomping your, your guts out. You know? And it's just, it's stupid. You guys need to know how to defend yourselves properly, but also reach out with people. If you're gonna if you're gonna swing your sword of the spirit around, do it with gentleness, man. Do it lovingly, with compassion. You're not trying to beat people up mentally here or intellectually. You want to win them over. You want to address their conscience, attack their conscience. Don't attack them. That's what the atheist does. He tries to attack us for our personality. It's a ad hominem attack. They try to discredit everything we believe in by the way that we act when we preach that we are no good. That we are saved by grace alone. Through faith alone in Christ alone in the finished work that He did alone. That's it. We didn't deserve anything to be saved. I didn't do anything to get saved. It was by the grace of God that I was saved. I have nothing to brag about. I'm just a beggar trying to show another beggar where to get some bread. Look, there's no denying violent things have been done by the church in the name of God, but there has been the exemption and not the rule. Uh, let's see, in addition, when the church has spent time when, with its head up, it's but doing bogus things, the church's leaders have historically owned it when wrong, have not repeated the gaffe, have grabbed the wheel and have effectively steered saints out of any erroneous detrimental ditch. Not so with Islam. In Robert Spencer's book, Religion of Peace, Why Christianity Is and Islam Isn't, Bob shows those who can still be shown anything factual, the massive and fundamental differences between Islam and Christianity. They are not equal no, no matter how much the blah blah blatherers of political correctness purport them to be. Their beliefs are not similar, not their practices nor their means to spreading their message. And to think otherwise, postmodern Pollyanna, Pollyanna could cost you your ass. Spencer points out the crystal clear facts that clash with the current anti-Christian hype such as most, mu most Muslims do not condemn jihad. Christianity and Islam have neither similar traditions nor similar modern realities. Christian religious violence, real or imagined, does not uh, mitigate the reality of jihad. Well, let's point out some facts real quick. Where is that religion, Islam, at? Look at the area and the region and the shape that their country is in where that is going on. Now look at where all, of the, all the places that were inspired by the Word of God and Christianity... Uh, Think about what has happened throughout history with people who have stuck to the Word of God. They have got liberty. They have got freedom. This is a this this country, the United States of America, is a republic. But now that the progressives or the modern day liberals have gotten the, the hold of the the um, what we'll call political correctness, they got the uh, they control the narrative. Because they own the mainstream media that brainwashes everybody and tells you that, oh, the jobs are, we're putting jobs in the economy. There is no problem here. All these people are trying to rewrite history. They're, they're willingly ignorant of the things that inspired people to write, to write the Constitution, the Bill of Rights, the Virginia Constitution, the uh, Northwest Ordinance. All these people were, you know, they weren't Christians, you guys, even though they mentioned God all the time, even though they made their points very clear. It doesn't matter. Because we know them better than they knew themselves and their convictions. It's their entire philosophical views, their worldviews are imaginary and perverted. All of them. They put all of their faith in man, not knowing that man is so... You don't put your faith in man, you guys. We are no good. Plus, I, no matter how good I try to act, I'm going to let you down. Because I'm flawed. But anyways, if you guys want to read the rest of this... Just go to ClashDaily.com because I had to go and I had to talk over this whole thing because it's propaganda, you guys. The, the, the reason why you see so much hostility toward Christians these days is because they are being brainwashed. Prop, there's propaganda everywhere that shows you that us Christians are not to be trusted, that we're not to be 
you know, the IRS, it, they, they, they target conservative and Christian groups. Look at this. It's all around you. Because they don't want to know the truth, because they want to have the world their way, which is orgies and baby sacrificing and all kinds of dirty stuff. But God bless you and have a good day.